Okay, I think uh, we're ready to start, so, uh, excuse me. Tonight's entertainment is the uh, Pacific Paradise Dancers. Uh, they're going to be doing a selection from the tropical islands of Polynesia for everybody here. Uh, they're going to be starting off in Hawaii, then doing dances from New Zealand, then going back to Hawaii, and finally finishing up in Tahiti, which is a nice place to finish, that's for sure. Uh, I think it's a very uh, good show, so hopefully everybody's going to have a good time. Uh, I'll start off by mentioning uh, once upon a time, not too long ago, Hawaiian music used to be the most popular music in the United States, believe it or not. Uh, there was an exhibition held in San Francisco called the uh, Panama Pacific Exposition in 1915. That was to celebrate the opening of the Panama Canal, and they actually had a Hawaiian group in a Hawaiian pavilion there at the exposition. 17 million people saw that group perform, and by the time they finished in 1916, Hawaiian music, according to Thomas Edison, remember him, was the most popular music in the United States, and outsold everything else. So tonight we're going to start with uh, one of the classics, kind of from that period, the Hawaiian War Chant, which dates back to 1936. And uh, the ladies are going to be using an implement called the Uli Uli. Yes, the Uli Uli. It's a uh, feathered gourd which is uh, filled with small pebbles, which makes a really nice uh, sound to go along with the dance. So without any further ado, the uh, Pacific Paradise Dancers with the Hawaiian War Chant. Make it away, ladies.
Okay, so uh, here's another little number from the classical Hawaiian period, uh, from all the way back in 1933. Probably most of you guys know this one. It's a medley of Little Brown Gal and Little Grass Shack. Marble shells with our love 
never be permitted in the village, in the villages, excuse me. In Hawaii, you are only allowed to have one alcoholic drink in front of you at any time. You're not allowed to have two drinks. I know for some people that's a problem. <laughs> so that's a strange one, I thought. Uh, another one also wouldn't do well in the villages. You are not allowed to leave your home in Hawaii if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> How do they know? <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, oh, yes. You are not allowed to wear your bathing suit on the street in Waikiki. Everybody does it, I think, but it's officially against the law. Rather a strange one. Not so good for the tourists, but it is the law. Um, yes? Oh, you're ready already. Oh, okay. Wow. That must have been on the SSD or something. I don't know. Okay, well, all right. So we're all of a sudden now in New Zealand. All right, so we're going to do two dances from the native Maori, Maori people of New Zealand. And that's going to be done by Donna and Costco. Uh, the first dance is called the Nawaka, and it uh, represents the paddling of war canoes. The second dance is called the Hai Rei Mai. It's a welcoming dance, and uh, it uses poi balls, which you'll see the ladies are wearing on their belts, uh, for very dramatic effects. Uh, and while the ladies are dancing, do notice the uh, skirts that they're wearing. Those are completely authentic. They're called pew-pew skirts, and they're not authentic to the native Maori people. Uh, they're all handmade, they're authentic, and they're made uh, from flat sleeves. Okay, so without further ado, Donna the Costco with the Nanawaka.
Okay, did, did you hear the uh, sounds of the sports when they were dancing? Yeah, that was pretty good. Also pretty good, nobody got injured with the boy balls. That's always very nice. Okay, so uh, I think we're moving to the next number. Excuse me, got to turn the page. Okay, um, well, I guess uh, they're a little slow, so we can go back to the weird Hawaiian laws while we're waiting for them. Uh, hmm. Ah, in Hawaii. Oh, sorry, I should ask. Are there, are there any twins in the audience tonight? Is anybody a twin? Uh, that's good. In Hawaii, it is, this is true, it's actually against the law for twins to work for the same company. Really? <laughs> kind of odd, but there you go. <laughs> in Hawaii, it is against the law to put coins inside your ear. That's right. So if you're thinking of putting coins in your ear, don't do it in Hawaii. Okay, and the next weird one, this is a strange one actually, this is from the ancient Orakama tribe. For the ancient Orakama tribe in Hawaii, it was illegal to eat your second wife. <laughs> no mention of the first wife. Just the second wife you're not allowed to eat. Very strange. <laughs> I guess they didn't want people going back for seconds, I don't know. Uh, uh. Well, you know, since there were so many weird laws in Hawaii, I had a look, and there are also some pretty strange laws in Florida as well. So, one of the strange laws in Florida is it's illegal to men appear, for men to appear in public wearing a strapless dress. Really? So, if any men are going to appear in public in a dress, they must have straps on. Also in Florida, if tie your alligator, your elephant, or your goat to a parking meter, you must pay for the parking meter. Absolutely. Otherwise you can have your elephant towed. Who wants to have their elephant towed? Okay. All right, let me just find my way on the page. Okay. All right. So now Fong, Olga, and Kazuko are going to do a beautiful dance called the Green Rose School Up, which uh, of course is talking about a lovely green rose which grows on the island of Maui. So Fong, Kazuko, and Olga with the Green Rose School Up.
one, I especially like the uh, sarongs that they're wearing. I think very cheerful and very colorful. Okay, so we're going to stay in Hawaii for a few more minutes. Now the ladies are going to demonstrate the use of the puili. These are uh, split bamboo sticks, and the song is Hey Ui. Oh, 
the outfit she has on, which is all purple, is the patu skirt. You can twirl around and show them how beautiful it is. The patu skirt has four yards of fabric, and then it has three rows of elastic gathered on the top. The patu skirt is used a lot of times for our chanting hula, which is called kahiko, which is ancient chant. She holds the ipu in her hand, as you see that we have already used during our show. Go ahead and give them the demonstration of the ipu. Very nice. Thank you, our lovely Joyce. Also, the ipu that she holds in her hand, this is the ipu what they look like when they grow on the vine on the ground. They are thick. They have seeds in them, and there's a long vine thing. Okay. Just wanted you to see what it looks like before it's hollowed out and made into a hollow gourd. Our next lovely model is going to be Marina. Come on out, Marina. She is wearing the two-piece outfit, which is a sarong, which is pretty much the same as what I have on here. I have the long one, which is wrapped around my neck. Hers is wrapped around her waist or her hips. She has the beautiful top to go with it. These sarongs also can be used as beachwear. They can be worn 15 different ways. One here, there, and they're tied all different ways. They can also be made into a cape or a shawl. She is carrying the kalaau sticks. Kalaau sticks are also used as implements to keep the rhythm to the beat of the music. Go ahead, Marina, get the kalaau sticks. with the music, they do dance with them. Also, they'll sometimes squat on the ground and use the call out sticks that way, keeping the rhythm but doing different things with the top of your body or your arms. Again, go ahead to the round arena. They can see the back of you. If you notice too, she has the hakule on her hair, her head, and also she has a flower on the left side of her head. Do you know what it means that the flower is worn on the left side? You're married. Sorry, guys, but she is taken. So sorry. <laughs> and again, she is adorned with the beautiful necklace and the arm and the wristband. Thank you so much, Marina. That was beautiful. <laughs> Lovely job so far, huh? Beautiful costume. Beautiful ladies. We have another beautiful lady. Her name is Leilani. She is directly from the islands of Hawaii. She? Oh my. What happened? Leilani, turn around so we can see your. Oh, gee. To talk. <laughs> Leilani, come up front a little bit closer so everybody can get a good look at you. Right there, stop right there. If you notice, this is one of our traditional outfits we wear in the islands of Tahiti. But trust me, it does look better on us. Seriously. She has on the coconut shells, which they use for a lot of their hulas in the islands of Hawaii and Tahiti. She <laughs> 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 Smile for us, Leilani. We always smile in the islands. Big smile, Leilani. <laughs> <laughs> she has the beautiful headpiece, which can also be worn in the islands of Tahiti and Hawaii. She does have the beautiful shell lace around her neck along with the coconut shells, and again, the, the beautiful grass skirt. Normally, we go barefoot, but she wanted to wear her shoes. So that's okay. Turn around, Leilani. Let's see the back of you again. See, she has a long, beautiful, dark hair. All right, Leilani. Come on. Come on. Come on, Leilani. This way. Leilani. 
she, she gets confused very easily. Over this one, honey, come on. It's okay. You'll be off in a minute. You go ahead and stand with the other beautiful girls. Go, and that's it. You, you keep them over there. Keep them occupied. Yes, yes, yes. Keep them occupied. Go. Come on. Go. Go. I certainly hope it gets better from here. Oh, my. You know it can't get any worse than it. But you never know. <laughs> we don't want to offend her. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> we're, we're going to bring out our, our next beautiful model, Lucy. Come on, Lucy. She is wearing the beautiful cellophane skirts. These date back to the 1930s and the 1940s in Hawaii. Do you remember the era of the cellophane skirts? Beautiful, isn't it? She is adorned with the lace again. She has a beautiful headpiece. As you see on the left side, she does have her flower, which means now she's married again. Sorry, guys. She is also holding the ukulele. Do you know who brought the ukulele over to the islands of Hawaii? Portuguese. Portuguese, you are right. Do you know what year? 1879 in August. Do you know what the word ukulele means? Jumping queen. I'm not going to go into the history on that. We're going to talk about our beautiful Lucy. Lucy, go ahead, turn around, and play us a tune with ukulele. That is very nice. See how the skirt sparkles? It's beautiful. We will be wearing that again in some of our shows coming up. We have many different colors of the skirts. Lucy, thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm sorry that you that you have to stand next to Leilani. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, is it okay, Leilani? Is it all right? I know. I'm sorry. Oh well. Let's continue. We have our lovely Vesema. She is wearing the costumes from the island of Tahiti. these costumes yet. These are all handmade by me. I try to create different designs. Pretty much the costumes that will speak to the girl. When costumes are made in the islands of Tahiti and even in Hawaii, especially for Tahitian competition, these outfits are made for the girl and also for the type of otea or dance they are going to do. The costume represents what they're dancing about. This costume was made when my group before had performed a competition and we did a bird dance. This is Peacock. You can turn around also and then you can move your hips. As you see when the hips move, it accentuates the hips, the hip belt on the hips. Of course, it give us a little demonstration. Move your hips again. See, it doesn't say she the hips. And even if she were not to move very much, that hip band is just going to wave like the water. Like the ocean, I should say. Very nice, Esama. Thank you so much. Yeah, she has the two top feathers all around her too. The bird dance as she walks off. Thank you. Aren't they beautiful? I love the Yes. As you all know, the islands of Hawaii, we do have a conquer. King Kamehameha conquered the islands of Hawaii. Do you know what the Lee is? A Lee means chief or a kahuna, as many people say. Chief, king, whatever, however you want to, to say it. 
The red and yellow kahitis we have in the back, as I just said, they are called kahitis. When there's kahitis around, it always means there is royalty. Royalty in the islands. They'll usually have parades or festivals, and you will see the big king, King Kamehameha, dressed in his, his big hat, his cape, and the men beside him, Kanis, K and E, will be carrying the alis, standing for royalty. And you know, in the islands of Hawaii, you don't disrespect the king. You never disrespect King Kamehameha, as you would not disrespect the land or the volcanoes over there. But with King Kamehameha, as I said, you always respect him. If you don't respect King Kamehameha or the land, there are consequences. You really don't know what those consequences could consist of. It could be a human sacrifice to the volcano Kilauea, which is Manapele, the fire goddess or goddess of fire. So we always make sure we respect our king. So I am going to introduce to you the king of the Hawaiian Islands, King Kamehameha. Forward for a little bit so they can really see you a little bit closer. As you see, he does wear the headpiece with his, his little crown on top. He does have his cape, his malo. Oh my, and he even kept his socks on. Oh no, I'm sorry. You know, it's sometimes hard to respect something like that, huh? Oh my, I'm glad I'm not up there. <laughs> well, King, I will let you go ahead and take over at this point. Were handmade by Nana. 
which is really, really quite an achievement, I have to say. They look really wonderful. Uh, the second is, uh, as Donna mentioned, the uh, dance troupe, the uh, Pacific Paradise dance troupe, do appear from time to time all over the villages. So please do attend one of their future shows uh, if you're in the area. And the third thing is, uh, back in the day, uh, hula actually was only performed by men. It was, uh, women were not allowed to dance hula. And I think after the fashion show, we can all say, <laughs> what a good thing that isn't the case anymore. You can imagine. All right, so uh, when the dancers reappear, at some point, uh, we're going to uh, go over to uh, the islands of Tahiti. I kind of see some movement back there on the stage. I don't know if they're coming or not. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess they got uh, too distracted by the fashion show. So, back to the always fascinating uh, Hawaiian trivia. Hmm. Okay, well, Hawaii, uh, as you may know, gets a lot of rain. Not as much rain, maybe, as the villages, it seems, sometimes. But actually, Hawaii is uh, the wettest spot on the planet. One of the Hawaiian islands gets almost 400 inches of rain a year. Which is a lot of rain, man. Wow. Okay, also, uh, Hawaii is... Oh, an interesting one. Do you know the Hawaiian alphabet only has 12 letters? Really, this is true. It has the five vowels, A, E, O, I. Uh, I didn't know A, E, I, O, U. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in grade school. Okay, so at A-E-I-O-N-U, also H-K-L-N-N-P and W. And that's it, only 12 letters in the alphabet. But I guess they do a lot with the 12 letters. You know, a lot of the Hawaiian words are very, very long. I think some of the longest in the world. Uh, you remember in uh, My Little Grass Shack, they actually talk about one of the Hawaiian state fish. Does anyone know what uh, that fish is? No, the mocking fish are good to eat now, aren't they? <laughs> but that's not the state fish. The state fish is the hoo hoo nuku nuku apua. Can the hoo 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 nuku nuku apua? Please? <laughs> the hoo 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 nuku nuku apua. Right, that's the state fish of Hawaii. The name is longer than the fish. All right, Hawaii also has technically the tallest mountain in the world, which is an interesting one. Let's see if I can find it here on my list. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, Mauna Kea. Of course, Mauna Kea. So Mauna Kea is about 14,000 feet uh, above sea level. But if you count it from its base, which is, uh, of course, below the water, that's an additional 17,000 feet underwater of this mountain. So Mauna Kea technically is the highest mountain in the world from base to tip at 31,000 feet. Much, much more than Everest, of course. Uh, and here they are. All right, so uh, we're going to go to Tahiti now. Give me a second. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we're now uh, at the beautiful islands of Tahiti. Very, very lovely islands indeed. Uh, again, the dance that the ladies are going to do now, as you can tell, uh, represents the paddling of canoes. Uh, the costumes are all authentic to the Tahitian islands. And this is the Alao Tahiti. Immediately following that dance, the ladies are going to go right into a num uh, another number, uh, which is a welcoming dance, and this, that one is called Tahiti Tahiti. Thank you. 
ladies and gentlemen of the Pacific Paradise Dancers. Aren't they wonderful?